Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen of an example of tuberculosis that is involving the lungs, the mediastinal lymph nodes, as well as the cervical lymph nodes. Let's have a quick look at the anatomy. This is the tongue. Here is the epiglottis, and we have the larynx here, the trachea, with the main bronchi, the hilar lymph nodes, and both lungs. And we also have very enlarged cervical lymph nodes. The main pathology is seen in the lungs, the hyla and cervical lymph nodes. And let's take a closer look. In the lungs, we can see that the parenchyma shows areas of consolidation, where the lung parenchyma shows more solid appearances compared to the normal lung or uninvolved lung. And this is due to the presence of numerous granulomas, many of which will have central necrosis. In the lymph nodes, in the hyla region, as well as the mediastinum, the nodes are enlarged. And we can also see that the cut surface of the nodes appears heterogeneous with these paler areas of caseous necrosis. Caseous means cheesy, so grossly, these areas of necrosis look a bit yellowish, and in the fresh specimen, they would look a bit friable or crumbly, or they will look as if they are breaking apart. Moving on to the cervical lymph nodes, we can see that on both sides, the nodes are very large and they are stuck together, and this is better appreciated on the opposite surface. These lymph nodes appear to be stuck to each other, and for this, we use the term matted. So we have matted, enlarged lymph nodes. Most of the time, the differential diagnosis for enlarged matted lymph nodes would include TB versus malignancy, and the malignancy can be primary nodal malignancy or metastatic malignancy in the lymph nodes. Clinically, on physical examination, nodes can also be appreciated as being enlarged and matted. Let's learn a little bit more about TB. TB tends to occur in lower socioeconomic status settings, for example, in crowded living conditions as well as in the setting of malnutrition, and this is because of person-to-person -person transmission. It also tends to occur in older adults and immunocompromised patients, as well as those with long-standing chronic conditions such as chronic renal failure or chronic lung disease. The route of transmission is airborne from person to person, and the bacteria can actually remain latent for years in the body. For example, in an old focus of infection that has become fibrotic or calcified, there can be organisms there that are dormant and become reactivated many years later, for example, if the patient becomes immunocompromised, and this may happen if perhaps the patient is receiving treatment for cancer. Clinically, there are several main manifestations of TB. There's primary TB. This occurs with the first infection, so the patient is not previously sensitized. Most of the time, it is self-contained in the small focus of consolidation in the lung. However, in a minority of patients, this can progress to have larger areas of consolidation in the lung, as well as hyla lymph adenopathy, and sometimes with an accompanying pleural effusion or pleuritis. And there is, of course, also a danger of lymphatic and hematogenous dissemination to the lung itself or to other organs. This may give rise to miliary TB, where we see numerous minute foci, one to two millimeters in size, of granulomatous inflammation and infection. Secondary TB occurs in previously infected patients, and usually these patients will have a weakened immune system. There is a specific pattern of involvement where the apex of the upper lobes are usually involved, and the lymph nodes are less often involved because the disease is walled off earlier. These patients can be asymptomatic, or if they are symptomatic, they can have fever, loss of weight and appetite, malaise and night sweats, and these symptoms very closely overlap with symptoms of some lymphomas. In terms of respiratory symptoms, they may have cough with pyrulent sputum as well as potentially hemoptysis. And again, as with primary TB, there is a risk of extra pulmonary involvement. 
So in terms of the gross morphology, in primary TB, often the lower part of the upper lobe or upper part of the lower lobe is involved by consolidation with caseous necrosis, and this is known as the gone focus. Here is a fresh specimen with this area of consolidation, and you can see that there is some necrosis here too. They are often accompanying hyalur lymph nodes, which are large and matted, and also showing caseous necrosis. So together, the GON focus and the hyalur lymph nodes form what is known as the GON complex. Over time, the GON complex undergoes healing, and there is fibrosis and calcification. In secondary TB, there is usually a well-demarcated area of consolidation, and this may also have areas of yellowish caseous necrosis, and again, there may be fibrosis and calcification with time. If the patient is not so well equipped to neutralize the infection, this area can actually enlarge and spread. It can erode into the airways, giving rise to cavitation, as you see here and here. And this involvement of the airways is what will lead to a cough with productive sputum. And this sputum actually contains infective organisms. They can also erode into the vessels, giving rise to hemoptysis. And there may be spread via lymphatics and blood vessels, causing miliary TB and also causing extrapulmonary TB. And this is how they can potentially get to the cervical lymph nodes. Here is a picture showing some enlarged matted lymph nodes with these geographic pale whitish or yellowish areas of caseous necrosis. Coming back to the specimen, by the way, this specimen is taken from our virtual pathology museum, and this is from our free online web resource, PathWeb. You can register for free. The link is in the video description, or you can just Google PathWeb. If you scroll down, you will be able to see more information such as clinical vignettes, gross description, gross and microscopic images. And in many of our pages, you will also see accompanying videos. There is also a separate video describing the microscopic features of TB. So in summary, this is a specimen showing an example of TB, which is involving the lungs giving rise to consolidation. It is also involving the mediastinal lymph nodes as well as the cervical lymph nodes causing enlarged matted lymph nodes with areas of caseous necrosis. Thank you.